Hi everyone, my name is Karen Bates and I love teaching people about how to have happier families by engaging in the fight for good. So today I want to talk about sibling rivalry. I was teaching at a homeschool conference the other day and at the end of my presentation I asked if anybody had any questions. And one mother raised her hand and she said, I do have a question about sibling rivalry. One of my kids is constantly fighting with his little sister and he likes to pick on her and I don't want to go in and rescue her all the time. But at the same time, I don't want to just let him pick on her and have them get in fights. So what is a good way to go about that? And I'm going to share with you some of what I shared with her and a little more because I've had a little more time to think about it now. Some of the principles and applications that you can use in your own family, that, some ideas that might help when you have situations like this, because I'm sure you relate, right? We've, if you have children, you've probably experienced some silly rivalry. So the first thing I think is important to, to look at when thinking about sibling rivalry is their motives, because we often focus on their behavior. We don't like the fighting, we don't like the yelling or the tattletelling, and so we want to jump in and punish that, hoping that the behavior will stop. But behavior stems from a certain motive, and of course children have a lot of different motives why they might be fighting. It could be revenge, they want to get someone in trouble, or it could be... Um, power they like the power they feel when they make somebody else have a reaction or greed because they don't want to share something that they believe is theirs or seeking attention you know there's a lot of different motives and we don't necessarily have to pinpoint the one that it is because we can't really guess um and or no but we do know that neither of them are being motivated by love because if one of them were then there wouldn't be any contention they the other person wouldn't have any power over them or any control over how they felt and so we know that they both, that both of their motives are off. And the motive that we want them to have and that we're hoping to have always is love, right? And so the first thing we got to do is focus on changing their heart because their heart is not in a good place. And in order to do that, we need to make sure our heart is in a good place, right? Because we can't, if we go into a contentious situation with a contentious heart and we want to yell and, and things, then all we're doing is adding to the contention. We're not changing anybody's hearts. And so if they're resting on the ground or hurting each other, of course, the first thing to do is to step in and separate everybody and have some time where everybody, including yourself, can calm down. And then when you are connected to God, you feel his love for them and you feel ready to move back into the situation, you can call them in and then you can resolve the issue together. And so there are certain ways, though, that I think um, we don't want to be the judge all the time, right? We don't want to... Uh, take on that role of I get to decide the outcomes all the time because then our kids will constantly be coming to us and we want them to learn to resolve their own problems. And so the first thing we got to do is before any of the fighting starts is to make sure that they understand the expectation. And in our home, the expectation is zero contention. There shouldn't be any fighting, any put downs, any um, mean things that we say that should not be allowed. Now, it kind of sounds like we're setting ourselves up for failure, right? Because, of course, there's going to be some of that. It's part of life and it's part of a family. But it's only setting yourself up for failure. And you'll only think that's a bad thing if you believe that failure is a bad thing. And so since we've tried to teach our children and since we believe that failure actually is a great teacher and that we can learn a lot every time we fail, then we're not afraid to set high expectations because we know that when we fail, we can learn. We know the expectation's there, but we'll learn something when we don't meet it. And so setting up the boundary, it's really hard to know like, well, how much teasing and meanness is, is gonna get me in trouble, how much isn't? So we just say, you know, contention isn't something that we want in our home and we're gonna try to, to shoot for zero contention. That's our expectation. Um, and then the next thing is to set up a reminder system about the fact that you don't have contention in your home. And so a lot of times we want to jump in with punishment, right? We want to punish the behavior. But what that often does is it feeds a con the contention because nobody likes to feel punished. And so instead of changing their heart, it kind of tends to make them more mad. So what I like to do is remind them in some way that will help them kind of reset their, them, their brain and try again. And so the way we go about it is I'll say, Oh, that was a put down. Um, I need you to do 10 push-ups. You know, we do drills and and with this warrior mindset, you know, you've got 
some exercises that you can do to kind of help you reset your brains, try again and start over. So I don't look at it and I try not to portray it as now you're being punished. It's more of like, okay, you need a little time, do some um, drills so that you can come back to the situation and try again. And it does wonders just because I think exercise and just kind of getting our um, energy going in a different direction just helps us diffuse the, the contention or the situation. And so that's one way is to set reminders instead of punishments, you know, initially as we're practicing this, this habit of not having contention in our home. And then the last thing that has really helped us is to set up a mediation system. So, you know, we've set expectations, we've set up reminder systems, and now a mediation system. When the reminders aren't working or when the contention's getting physical or, you know, maybe we didn't see it at the beginning and now it's gotten worse, is to first, like I said, separate, make sure everybody's in the right frame of mind, and then you come together. And what I like to do is because, um, I don't want to be the judge all the time and I want them to resolve their own conflicts is I charge a, a mediator fee. And so I don't make them pay me money or anything, but I'll have them pick up like 10 items around the house or something so that if they want me to judge their problem, they have to pay me in some way. So that's kind of like their payment. And so once they've both done that and they both want this judgment or me to be their mediator, then we'll come together and I'll ask them to tell me their side of the story and to try to tell me the other person's side of the story. And each one of them needs to be uh, respectful when the other person's saying what they think. And then once they both kind of share their side and the other person's perspective, I'll ask them, well, do you guys think you can resolve this on your own? You know, you're understanding each other's perspective. Is there some way that you want to resolve this before I give my judgment? And they know that my judgment has to take place, right? So once I give the judgment, they don't have any more agency as to what they can do. And so a lot of times they prefer to just make their own judgment or, or resolve the conflict themselves. So they all say, uh, actually, I think that this probably would work, or do you want to try this instead? And so that works. But if they don't and they still want me to judge, then I'll say, okay, well, this is how I see it, and this is why I'm going to make this judgment. And so, you know, next time you guys have this conflict, maybe you can try to look at it that way, and then we move on. And so having those three systems in place, the expectations, the reminders, and then the mediation system has really helped us diffuse the contention. Not that we're perfect, like I said, nobody's going to be, but my kids do get along really well and we get a lot of practice in learning how to do this you know with three boys in a row a lot of times that we get plenty of practice and they're learning and growing from it if you guys have any thoughts about how to diffuse contention then uh, please share them in the comments I'd love to hear them some more ideas that we're always hoping for good ideas to help one another so those are some of mine i hope you enjoyed them and i hope they helped you and i will see you later bye